Hey everyone, I'm your host Jordan Wilson and this is episode four. Uh, today I am with a Toronto FC Academy product, a North Star Shield winner. I would say the league's best or one of the best <laughs> right backs, uh, Kunle Dadaluk. What's going on, brother? I was going nothing much, nothing much just here. Excited to be on this little podcast and give you guys a little insight about me. Love it. Um, I, you smirked when I said one of the best right backs in the league. Like, would you would you consider yourself that? Yeah, I consider myself a very talented right back in this league. One of the yeah. better ones to say. Now nah, you are, me. bro. I'm, I'm putting I'm putting you in top three. I mean, I play with Chris No. He might not mm-hmm. may, or may not be in this league. Who knows uh, how how the cookie crumbles? But yeah, it's it's you and him for me. I, I can't really think of another one up there that, that kind of matches you guys, but I could be wrong. Any right backs out there who have been putting in a shift, um, just let me know if I've been, <laughs> if I'm selling <laughs> shit or not. Now, crazy thing about you, man, is you're playing, you're super fast, you're strong, you can take a big touch. I'm like, yo, you could probably clap this guy and tackle him, but then you, you just, you find a way to push it. You got you got gears, man. Yeah, like that's that. the thing with me. They they think I take a big touch, like, oh, he's gone, he lost it. But they don't know, two seconds, I caught up to the ball already. So it yeah, works for me, got, it benefits have, me. You have some you have some gears. I think, too, with, like, pacey players as well, it's like, I don't know if you're always pacey, but um, it's one of those things you can, like, get into bad habits because you're just so fast. But, like, I think with you, like, you really you really honed, uh, honed that position as a, as a right back. Mm-hmm. And I, I know you weren't always a right back. No, no. But, uh, You've been you've been killing it for the past two seasons. Definitely, definitely been a guy to watch. Thank you. And you said if I've always been fast. Actually, I haven't. I used okay. to be not pretty fast, but decent speed. But like when I was younger, my mom took me and my brothers to like run around the block at least like once or twice a week. We race, and then maybe I I, don't, I always come like last, you know, between my family. And out of nowhere, yes. I just started moving. I'm like, whoa, I'm moving. I'm just past everybody, and they're like shocked, like. Well, where did he come from? He went from being last to like beating all of us. So I got my speech from yeah. my mom, pretty much. So all your prayers were answered. You, you ended up getting a little turbo pack. And yeah, getting some know, wheels. You know Love the that. African African diet mixed with our genetics benefits <laughs> me. Well, tell me, tell me where you're from. Uh, where your family's from? What's your heritage? Yeah, well, my family we're all Nigerian from Lagos, Nigeria. That's where my mom and dad Lagos. were born and raised. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. And then they moved here to like give us a better life with more opportunity, and it really benefited all of us. Like my, my one of my older brothers is a data managing data management engineer. My other one's a mechanical engineer. My little sister's still in school, but she's going to become a doctor. And I guess I took the easier route becoming a soccer player out of all of those. <laughs> but wait, who knows? No easy route, bro. The life of a footballer is difficult. It's challenging in its own regard, right? Yeah, um, exactly. That's crazy. So you were born born here in Canada. Yeah, I was born. Yeah, yeah, in Toronto. Cool. That's nice, man. Um, Nigerian roots, you know, that's a the very, very strong traditions in Nigerian culture. I think uh and the Nigerian parents always want their kids to be literally top of the top. Like, yeah. They, they don't want you finishing third in the class. Like they want you up there. Oh yeah, you know. And they, you and know. they, and they, de- they demand excellence for sure. All my Nigerian friends that I know, I, we always we always joke about the similarities between Nigerians, Jamaicans, like whatever it might be, like Black parents just want the best for their kids, uh, and they make it known. They're not shy about that. Exactly. Not like, I hope you do your best. They're like, yo, <laughs> this is what you yeah. should be doing. Yeah, like, exactly. I've sacrificed for you. Like, yeah, this is your time. Crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to um, – you grew up in the TFC Academy playing. Yeah. Um, just tell me a little bit about that before I ask my next question. Yeah, I grew up, I've been with TFC for me about six, seven years. Out of my team that went to, for a trial, I was the only one that made it. So at first, I was a little bit shy because everybody else had their click without Vaughn or Woodbridge type players. So I was by myself. But generally opened up and I found some really good friends. One that signed here, Stephanie Yates. Came for him to get here and get started. Hope to get with the island life. Uh, some really good coach at TFC, Danny Dickio. He helped shape me to the player I am. He was a hard coach, but he always wanted the best for me. Another one was... Uh, Michael Stefano, he, he was actually with me at West Toronto, so we both came to TFC together. So he kind of looked out for me within the Toronto FC uh, family, and it was a pretty good experience. I traveled a lot around the world with Toronto FC, made good friends, learned, learned, learned a lot about my game and elevated over there. 
Yeah, that's that's amazing, man. Um, my question to you is now that you're a, a name in the lead that everyone knows in the CPO, um, and from the nearly, I think, 50 appearances you have, like you've earned that. You you've always been uh, a player to player to watch, and you and you play a certain type of way. Um, talk me through December 5th, 2021. I don't know if this date rings a bell to you, but December 5th, 2021 is the day you are a North Star Shield champion. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so I'm not here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I win all the time. You got to be more specific. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the day, cold day, because I was, I was mm-hmm, coming yeah. that, that that game. Um, cold game in Hamilton, that pitch doesn't like, it doesn't cover any wind. Like you catch that on your back yeah. or in your face. Like, tell me about that day. Like anything that stands out to you. Uh, so we woke up, I woke up that morning feeling good. We were all confident. Like, we, we don't have a good enough record against Ford, but we know this is our day. This is our time. Coach Pond the dressing room let us know that, hey, we're here for a reason. It's just one night in a game. Forget about the past. Just focus on the present. We put in the work throughout the whole year to set us up for this moment. I know it's going to take it away from us. And we knew once that whistle blew, it was going to be a battle. Only the, the, the better team was going to win that championship. And we knew if we set off strong, we would have got that win. We would have got the exact the victory, which we did. We held off their attacks because they were, they were attacking in forces. We just stayed committed to our game plan. And I knew that year with Pop, I'm, like, I'm a difference maker type of player. Like I won't start the game, but I'll finish the game. So I knew anywhere between the 60th minute to 90th minute, it's my time. And when I'm on the field, it's straight on attack. Like that's that was my role for that year. Just attack, attack, attack the fullbacks, put them under pressure, and that's exactly what I did. When I came on, I put them under pressure. You know, gave us a little breathing room, and once that whistle blew and we won, I was like, "Oh, I can't believe it! We're champions!" Like yeah. the first time I ever won a big title. So I was in shock. Everyone was in shock. And after once we went into the change room, it hit me. I was like, "I don't know if you know, I was on IG Live. You know, I was getting a little, you know, worked <laughs> up, a little drinking. Or like, yeah, 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 talking my smack. It was an amazing day for us." And me, yeah. me especially. So I think one of the most crucial things in a in a system and a family, especially with football, is your coach. Like they can have a group that maybe isn't so talented, feeling like they're the best, but he could also uh, take a team to their doom if like he's not taking care of certain situations. So for me, my question to you is: one, how is it playing over or playing for someone? like Palmer Duca that was so militant and wanted his team on a certain wavelength. And then having the added bonus of like, I know you played pro before, but like this was Pacific being your team that you played and had a significant role. How did you feel having a significant role under someone who looked like you? Like, how did that feel for you? I mean, it felt amazing. Someone I could actually relate to, like, not everybody gets you as a player, but with Pa, it was an amazing experience from the jump. He he told me, like, you're going to be a difference maker on this team. Just keep believing in yourself. Because I haven't played probably three years prior to the Pacific, so it's hard for me getting back into the game. I don't know if you remember the bubble. My first very professional game was against you guys in, in Winnipeg. So I was nervous. Yeah. I, I trained very good leading up to that game, so he gave me a chance. I didn't really take my chance as much as everyone expected from me, and then in that after the game in the change room, like the people part of the team can can uh, relate to that. Like he hammered me. Like I expected more from you. I want more from you. Like I see the potential you have. I don't know if you see it yet, but I'm gonna bring it out of you that year. So he he that game he broke me down. Like mentally he broke me. But then he told me this can either make you stronger or you could you could just live under the scale and just hide. But it made me strong in a way because after that my next game was against Edmonton. And I had an amazing game. I killed it, attacking wise, defending wise. And he told me, "This is what I expected from you. This is the player yeah. I brought in specific. I knew what I expected from you." So he's a very vocal guy. But if he sees something to you, he's gonna bring it out of you. You're not gonna hide. He wants you to succeed. That's what I really appreciate about Pa. He sent me up to the player I am today. And I appreciate him for that. He gave me the opportunity, and I took it. So he has a special place in my heart as a football coach and a person. Like I, that's amazing to hear. Like I have. I have my stories of like good coaches that I've had and the guys that I've connected with, you know, my university coach was outstanding. Like I've had coaches where I get along with, or that I know that um, we vibe, maybe we think the same, we have the same fighting spirit. Like that, that's one thing, but I think at the professional level, 
I don't want to say spoiled, but I think it's been a privilege for you to have someone, even if it was just for a season, to yeah. like believe in you, to look like you, to have the same experiences that you've had when he was playing or just growing up. Um, there's certain things that you can't really explain, like perspective. Do you know what I mean? Like the skin that yeah. we're in, I can't explain to someone things that have happened. You know, I feel like when you're when you're when you're black, you kind of just know these things like you know these areas or you know these like struggles that might have happened and it, i feel like playing for someone like that who has played at such a high level who has that like winning mentality i i'm envious of you and that right because like you even though it was just for a season you had that and i could also see with that group that you guys were bought in uh and i know paul was like the big reason behind that I would love to pick his brain one of these days, but he was a uh, he was definitely a turning point. I think the way that even like he moved in the bubble, like the first the first month, he was a guy that was like, like even to me, like he just came up to me randomly, wanted to speak, um, very much, very much out there, very much like ready and willing to like connect uh, with people, and um, yeah, speaks volumes for for a group because I could see Pacific in twenty twenty one season. You guys are on it. You guys are good. But you guys yeah. were on it, like collective and together. And even that match specifically, it was like, hey, when uh, when Forge is attacking, uh, I know they were a bit tired with all their traveling and whatnot. But it's just like as 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 the game went on, it was just like you guys you guys look like a side that was that was ready to take it. And I know Paul Paul is the biggest reason behind that. Um, let's talk about let's switch switch gears into. I guess more personally about okay. you and what you want to achieve. Like we talk about your your Nigerian parents and what they demand of you and your your siblings that are mechanics and, and future doctors. Like what does Kunle want to achieve? Like where do you want to go? What's your plan for your life? I want to reach the highest level I could possibly reach. I, I do have dreams to play in the Champions League. Like that's a big goal for me one day eventually. And who knows, soon enough for the Nigerian national team, something that's been okay. on my mind as well. I which, is like the, the, which is one of the sickest kits I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I'd mm -hmm. wear that to a barbecue. But anyways, go ahead. Sorry. It's <laughs> all good, know. man. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, we personally want to play in a Champions League game, feel that experience. I think that's a lot of, a lot of footballers' dreams. Playing national team, I want to play for the World Cup with the representing Nigeria. That's a goal of mine, of course. I wanted to, I'm making steps to reach those goals, slow and steady. Right now, this this uh, 2020 season is going to be a big year for me. Hopefully, I reach the goals I want to reach to set me up for a brighter future. Love it. I love that. You, um, I, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember seeing you at like FTF and like looking at your shorts and I saw like Helsinger on it, which okay, is a yeah. club in, in Denmark. I forget what year this was anyways, but I was like, oh, you're out in Denmark. Like that's where I was or I've been playing for for a few years. Um, what was that experience like? I know for you, like, it was maybe not breaking into, like, first team and, and whatnot, but, like, for players growing up or watching this, you know, you're 23, you're so young, you still have so many years of, of football left. But just talk about, like, for you and the culture shock of going from Toronto to Denmark and, and how that came about. Like, just tell me a bit about it. It was a big, big difference from Toronto to Helsinki or Denmark. It's a very quiet community, closed off community. So like you'll have your alone time. It's not as rowdy as Toronto, but it's nice. The scenery was amazing. And I went there on a trial and it was a good trial. They offered me a three-year contract. This was maybe four years ago. And during preseason, I was killing it. They actually moved me from winger to right back because they told me heart to heart. You won't, you don't make it as a winger here, like in football. It, it shocked me. Then he said, as a fullback, you have a very, very good career. If you make that switch and you dial in, I can see you going, very, going places in that position. So that's where I made my initial jump from winger to fullback. And the team was welcoming. The players were good quality players. They were nice. They helped me grow. They didn't like, oh, you're coming from my spot. Like, I don't want to help you succeed. It was a completely different. So I was shocked. They're like, yeah, do this, do this. This is what you're missing in your game. Work on it. So it was an amazing experience. And then my coach that brought me in at the time, he left during preseason. And then the new coach came in and he just talked to all, like, all international young players. Listen here, like I'm bringing my players in and you guys won't get that chance. Like I trust these players. I know these players. So it's either you stay here and 
just become a training player or you could like you should agree to terminate your contract and find somewhere else to go. So I made the decision to leave rather than waste a year of just training in, in Denmark. And that's what happened with me and over there. I have no regrets though. It was an amazing experience to help me grow as a player, but it just didn't work out at the time. For sure. And it's not easy. Like I, I always try to tell people about um, going overseas. Like for me, my experience as well, it, you play and you wanna you wanna break in, but it's it's so much else that happens outside of yeah. the actual training or games. Like it's it's you getting acclimated, like you feel uncomfortable, being homesick. What do you eat? Like now, for, for some people, it's like this is the first time you're going out and like cooking, or mm-hmm. like no one's telling you when to go to bed. Like maybe at home when you're living, you're like, yo, your parents are like twelve o'clock, and you're still making noise. They're like, yo. Like cut it out, but like you're on your own. So like how you break down your day, like that's the biggest part of things. Yeah. Um. So I I can never tell someone when's the right time to go and whatnot, but I I would always say and and stress that like you have to be like sure of who you are. I, I like that you went away, you made a decision to come back, and like obviously now like your development is is taking off and you're doing well within the game. And honestly, this this next upcoming season. I'm expecting big things from you, you know, some crosses, yeah. some assists. I hate that the one goal you scored, I was on the pitch <laughs> and it was against New York. That that will always burn me. But um, that was a great game as well. That was just a, a great game. Oh, overall. great game. I don't know. <laughs> Not for you guys, for sure. But, like, in terms of – t- well, for you, good goal. Good goal. You play well. Mm-hmm. Honestly, man, one thing I'll say about you too is, like, every time you have this little band, a little purple band, <laughs> I'm like, yo, it makes you look like Donatello. Like, you look like a teenage <laughs> ninja turtle. Like, you end up getting different different speeds and different uh, <laughs> different gadgets. I don't know what Donatello has. If he has the nun- no, nunchucks, is Michelangelo. But anyways, whatever he has, I feel like you have that when you when you play with this. Is this even legal? Like, the little the little headband? Yeah, like, yeah, it comes out. I always wanted, like, my first year Pacific, I always wanted to do it. Go wear a headband, like, something stand out, like, my little thing. I worked one day and Paul's immediately said, no, take that off. We're not doing that here. I was like, like no, nah, we're old school. We don't do none of that flashy things. And then during, during a training session before a game, I got elbowed and I got a huge hole in my head and started bleeding. And in order to cover it up, I had to wear a bandage. And I asked Paul, can I, can I wear my head right now to help like keep the bandage in place? He said, yeah. Ever since then, I had a very good game. I told him, I can't go with this. You know, this might be my little... <laughs> My little things like you know what if you play like that keep it. So ever since that I day, love this. Ever since that, I just kept my headband. He's like keep that. That's crazy, man. Honestly, this was a this was a nice little intro into you. I, I look forward into talking mm-hmm. or to talking with you more and just watching you this year and just moving forward. And I will also say like I don't have all the answers, but just someone who has played. Um, okay. If you ever need anything, or if you ever want to reach out, definitely, definitely hit me up. And maybe I don't know, maybe I don't know it, but maybe I can get you in touch with someone. Or we just keep conversations open and and flowing. Um, I got some rapid fire questions for you, and then okay, uh, I'll let you take off. All right. Yeah, so here we good. go with um, you. Tell me the best player that you've ever played with, like the on best a team. Ever on your team. Yeah. As for you, Alfonso Davies. I mean, his name speaks for himself. That. He's an amazing player. And where was that? When did you play with him? Uh, under 15 camp for Canada. We're in Mexico. And that's the first camp, like, we all played together. And he, he could just tell the difference in him. I think he scored, like, a header from the top of the 18. I don't know how he generated that much power, but his speed, <laughs> speed, I don't know. Last time he raced, it was a close match, but obviously he's faster, but I'm right there with him. It was close. You know, it's not. It's nice to to say that you you played with uh, Canada's best, and that also you're not that far from him. You know what I mean? Like uh, in terms of speed, you are a rapper. I can't imagine seeing Alfonso Davies on the pitch. Like I think I could overhit a long ball about seven, eight yards, and he'll catch it. Like he's mm-hmm. just that rapid. Um, but yeah, what a player! What a player to mention. All right, your favorite all-time player ever. All time. For me personally, it's Fernando Torres. That's who made me really fond yeah. of the game. Him back in the, in the Liverpool days. Yeah. He speaks for him to okay. me. Are you a Liverpool fan? No. Okay, Not anymore. Like Tor- Torres. 
Yeah, it's a tough one. I'm I'm a Tottenham fan right now. Wow, you said right now? See, yo, you like, young. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. I I've been a Tottenham fan for a while now, but like, it's it's tough for us. It's tough. Nah, fair enough. Um, fair enough. It's been tough. I'd say Tottenham is yeah. I'm an Arsenal fan, so I have nothing. I have nothing oh, good man. to say about Tottenham. So we'll just we'll just keep that moving. Um, your best manager, like favorite manager, the manager you got along with, uh, the most or helped you the most. My probably my very first manager, uh, Michael Stefano. He helped me get into the game of football. Hey, even if my parents couldn't even drive me to training sessions, he'll pick me up. He'll make sure I arrive. Hey, so he, he made me guys. fall in love with yeah. the game. Special, special, sure. special place in my heart. Make sure you tag him in this video, yo. Let, show him, show him your love. For, oh, sure. for sure. My guy. All right, cool. This um, most skillful player you faced. Most skillful player. Okay, it had to be a uh, Diego Lennon's, probably him. Yeah. 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 Back in the day. Yeah, on skates or nah? Oh, I was a winger those times, so you know he wasn't he wasn't doing that to me. But <laughs> you're watching him do work. I was watching him do work, yeah, exactly. It's amazing. I bet. Okay. Um, here's a question for, for people to get to know you. If you didn't play football, what would you do? Slash, like what are you interested in? Like if football wasn't it, what do you think you'd be doing? I'll still be part of the game, probably like a physiotherapist. I would get okay. into that role. Or if not, I would have probably went to track and field. I was doing that that. with football growing up, so. Yeah. You're rapid, the speed. All right, cool. Um, This is a good question. Poor in training, but who's a gem on the match day? Like, there's just some of those guys. Like, who is a guy that you're like, yo, I don't want you on my team for 5v5, but when it comes to a match on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, he is just a gem. Like, who is this guy? And it could be throughout your whole career when you're a kid. Or even now, if you have if you have the guts to say someone now, and I'll, I'll say his name. He's not with the club anymore. Uh, Gianni Dos Santos. He's my boy. Where during five v five in Trini, you don't want him because he'll do some really? crazy. He'll do like he'll shoot from anywhere. You don't know where it's going, or he'll try to take it by himself. You know, create something. Be like, come on, just pass the ball. But during a game, be like, do you? Because he he's on. When he's on, he's on. Yeah, he'll sauce nah, he'll he's a baller. Hit it. He's shifty. Yeah, for sure. Crazy he seemed player. like a temperamental guy. I didn't know that he would be like that in training, though. I thought he would be cooking man in training. But oh, he no. He, he he knows me, man. I don't, he ain't getting by me. That's but he's that, he's that type of player. Like, he'll do a little too much, and he'll shoot it. Like, Yo, where's this ball going? But in games, <laughs> like, like, he perfected it. You know where it's going. You see it going top corner, bottom bottom corner, something. That's, That's crazy. a crazy player. All right. Do um, you have any game day superstitions outside of your, your Donatello headband, which obviously brings you superpowers? Me, I just listen to music from one second to the change room until we have to go. Like, I put on my headphones. I don't talk. I don't really like to talk to anybody. I just do my own thing. Fair. It's time to go. It's time to go out. So, like, I, just don't, I don't like being t- touched or anything. Just let me be. Let me, let me lock in. And then the whistle blows. All That's right, it. we're boys again. Love it. All right, last two questions. Um, your favorite football boots ever? Like, what was that boot that you just like? It could still be a boot, maybe now, but that one shoe that was just like, yo, this is me. Um, the Nike Safaris, the polka dots, black and white ones. Jeez, so back in the day, oh my, I was bottom of those boots. I put them on. I was like, I was Ronaldo that back in then. I'm shooting from <laughs> anywhere. I'm heading it. That boost gave me so much confidence. That was my oh, favorite boost of all time. That's crazy. Um, last question. If you have one album to listen to forever, what album is that? Album? Oh, me, personally, I don't really listen to albums like that. You didn't take them in, eh? No, I'm not really an album guy. I, just, I take right, different I'll music from you. different. What, what artist, if you had one artist to listen to forever, who is that? Meek Mill. Look at that. You know who's a Meat Mill fan? Jordan Faria as well. Shout out to my yeah. boy. Yo, he he would say the same. Well, he would say that he listened to Meek on like game days. And like Meek was just did something different for him. But now, you know, every time I see him, I'm going to think of two things. Donatello and I'm going <laughs> to think of Meat Mill. I'm going to think of All right, two. all right. My guy. All right, brother. Good luck with your season. Go kill it. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, no problem. I'm sure whoever's watching this knows you a little bit better. 
and yeah, man, we'll just have future talks and future chats, but I appreciate you. Um, here you guys are watching a North Star Shield winner, uh, Toronto FC Academy product, but a guy who says and promises he's going to kill it for Pacific FC this season. So sky's the limit, brother. Go do your thing. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. No problem.